I'm Pippa. And I'm Beth. And And we're your hosts. Happy New Year 2018. Welcome to January. How is everyone? How are you, Beth? Did my tax return? Yay! Nice. I have not. Well, you've only just told me that I might actually need to do one. I didn't think I did. Yeah. Because I had no money. Do a tax return. Um, yeah, I should probably do that. Be an adult. Um, I know. <laughs> it feels really grown up. Does it? Or yeah. does it just feel stressful? It feels like a long form, which is what adulthood is, isn't it? Mm, a series of long form forms. Forms. Taxes and death. What is the phrase? Death and death taxes. Death and taxes. The yeah. only things that are inevitable. Yeah. Um, have you had any resolutions? No, I don't do New Year's resolutions. As a rule? Well, I've done them a few years ago, I did them, and I just didn't do any of the things that I resolved to do. I was making resolutions to do stuff instead of not do stuff, because I think negative resolutions to like, I'm not going to eat bad things anymore, or I'm not going to go to bed late is like boring so I did one to that I was going to learn how to make the perfect tiramisu and I did another one that I was going to make keep a list of everything I watched like movies oh that's really um, nice but I just didn't do either of them the year that I resolved to make the best tiramisu I did not wait make one tiramisu for the whole year the year <laughs> I resolved to keep a list of films I kept a list of four films it lasted a month and then just abandoned the list and found the notebook like a year later and went oh no mm. I'm such a bad person broken dreams so, no, I don't do New Year's. I do do resolutions, but not New Year's ones. Fair enough, fair enough. Um, I Have I done New Year's resolutions? I don't know if I have. I definitely haven't this year, I haven't consciously. Been trying to be, you know, the classic, be on your phone less. Um, I'm really trying to read more, um, like less social media and reading more. Like really want to try and read on the tube more because I just tend to use the tube to like have anxiety and like think about everything and get really stressed um but i want to try and read more on the tube i play words with friends on the tube don't you need the internet for that um if you open it before you go underground then you can play do a few goes and then they just all happen when you get off the tube wait how do you do a few goes what do you mean as in oh as in you as play in, like, with the I've phone got not with the games not with a friend yeah not with a friend oh, just like right. oh, i've got games going with a friend Oh my god, I'll be so dangerous. If I add you as a friend on Words of Friends, yeah, I will do never it. leave the house. Do it. Genuinely. I, like, I only ever do it when I'm underground because also it mutes the adverts. Oh my god, that's so clever. Mm. Oh my god, no, you're like <laughs> influencing <laughs> me. I really, I honestly, I think really I just deleted Words well, of Friends because so I really got addicted out. to it. Um, anyway, enough about resolutions. Oh, Dry January is another one that people do, isn't it? No. No. Um, <laughs> veganery is another one. You're already I'm vegan. Already vegan. Although I am actually, you know what I have done? Uh, I've properly given up gluten because I am one of those annoying people that is intolerant to wheat. And I to- don't normally pay attention. I normally just eat wheat anyway and just deal with it. But I got really ill over Christmas from doing that. So I'm actually on a proper gluten cleanse. And it does feel amazing. But fuck me, is it hard? It's so hard to be vegan and gluten free. Um, so if anyone has any recipes, um, send them over. Because it's honestly a very hard life. You've got to cook everything. You've always got to have a lunchbox. I'm, I've always got a lunchbox anyway, but, you know, that idea of not just not being able to go in and buy a sandwich is like, ugh. Yeah, I've been eating a lot of crisps, which is like obviously what you're not supposed to do. <laughs> um, a healthy, gluten-free, vegan lifestyle. Yeah. Hmm, crisps. Chips and crisps. Chips and crisps. On alternate rotation. Yeah, because it's all you can get sometimes. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't really work. Um, so anyway, this episode, our January episode, our new episode for 2018, uh, we were fortunate enough to interview the wonderful and delightful actor Raki Thakra. Um, and she was preparing for her upcoming show, There or Here, which is on at the Park Theatre now. Now, you can get your tickets now. Um, and it's written by Jennifer Maisel and directed by Vic Savalingham. And we caught up with her in her lovely flat. And it was wonderful. It was so cosy. I know. Cosy flat, clo- cosy chat. Much cosier. Oh, nice. Much cosier than um, where we are right now, I think. In Pippa's warehouse. <laughs> in my warehouse. Although it is quite warm, but it's also cold. <laughs> that makes it sound like you own a whole warehouse. Oh, oh God, I wish. I wish. Um, yeah, it's just a studio in our warehouse. Yeah, so <laughs> have a listen to the interview and then make sure you keep on listening after the interview. Don't switch off. Uh, we've got loads of recommendations for you after speaking to Raki. 
We've got shows to see in February, including the return of Vault Festival. Woo woo! Yay! We will be taking our stickers to adorn the posters of all the shows that pass the Bechdel test, the ones we know about. Mm -hmm. Uh, So we want to make sure that they stand out so you can make good choices if you've made a resolution to uh, see more shows that pass the Bechdel test. Yeah, so uh, keep your eyes out for our logo plastered around vaults and as always do let us know if you see a bit of brilliant feminist theatre or theatre that passes the Bechdel test that you think we should amplify let us know and we'll send t- stickers over and go mad email us email us tweet us Bechdel theatre Bechdel theatre at gmail.com lovely and so should we just hand it over to the interview yeah whoop whoop it's enjoy <laughs> Hello, we are here with Raki Thakra in her lovely living room in West London. And Whiskers the Cat. And Whiskers the Cat. <laughs> and Whiskers, he's, he's actually right by us as well. He's not, yeah. like, he's not gone to the... He's our fourth guest. Yeah. Fourth guest, fourth person recording. Is it the first male that's ever been on the podcast? <gasps> so true. <laughs> <laughs> Don't yeah. say anything. Yeah. <laughs> if he makes a loud crash, that'll be the first ever boy on the pod. Interrupting. I think, yeah, like, if you interrupt me, you're like, food. No, made my dinner. <laughs> uh, so, Raki, would you like to introduce yourself? Say who you are, what you're all about, what you do? What I'm all about? Oh, my gosh. Um, I'm Raki. Uh, I live here, in this place that you are. Mm-hmm. Um, I am an actress, and in a play at the moment called There or Here, uh, which is on at the Park Theatre in Finsbury Park. Uh, what else do you want to know? I don't know. Um, I'm not very good at like introing myself. That was, that was, that that was good. good. Yeah. Yeah, I usually yeah. mention my cat, but we've, we've covered that. <laughs> I've got a cat. He's here I've cleaning. Got a cat. <laughs> Where are you from? I'm from Leicester. Cool. Oh. Yeah, Midlands. Um, oh, and I moved no. to London like five years ago. Not got a Midlands accent? A little bit? I do say glass. Oh, okay. And bath. Oh. And grass. Um, yeah, you don't know. You wouldn't know it. Leicester's a bit weird. Have you ever been there? Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's, it's odd though, because it's like the heart of England, so... You get a slight northern twang, but not really. Um, there or here? Can we yeah. talk about a play? <laughs> Sorry. Massive That transition. was my deviation. Um, so, what is There or Here about? Where is there and where is here? Oh, let me tell you in like a really roundabout way. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, um, at the heart of it is a couple, an American couple, who can't have children and the big overall story is that they go to India to get a surrogate and um, it's about that journey and along the way it sort of jumps back and forth in time and um, what I don't know how much is in the blurb so I don't want to give too much away but um, along the way um, different people's opinions on what they're doing and what happens to their relationship is is I think Mm. the the major thing Um, but surrogacy in India is this whole thing it's 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 crazy uh it's a business it's a complete business because it's oh. a third of the price of what you'd pay in the west wow. um i thought so i was talking to my friends yeah. about surrogacy the other day i can't remember why yeah they're um they're nhs workers actually it was because of that and um we were talking about um i didn't know anything about surrogacy or like but rights yeah, or I anything do. in the uk no. but it is illegal to ha- to have money to be a surrogate in the UK. Oh, it's so in like you, you can't pay someone to do it. So if you're a surrogate, you have to do it for free in the UK? Yeah. I think, I th- I mean, maybe not I'm the, wrong. Not if it, like, I, I think you can't, well, I don't know actually. I maybe don't know you that. can't make a I profit? Sh- <laughs> well, I, I don't guessing. know, maybe that's why the agency is there, but I don't know, mm. maybe that's why they go to the, U- the India then. Yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah, India. <laughs> India. <laughs> People um, outsource, yeah. Yeah, um, because what from what, like the documentaries that we've watched and stuff, they all talk about how it's cheaper in the, in India to do mm. it so maybe I think, they like, don't get yeah maybe they just get expensive I don't or think like yeah maybe like the person the surrogate themselves doesn't get like a, you know a lump sum but I think the cost of actually going through with surrogacy is what is expensive Huge. here yeah um so do they have to pay money towards if the woman's not earning the surrogate is not earning money must, it, that must then be the expenses, it must be right? the expenses of keeping her like yeah. going does and she the, get uh, expenses yeah. and everything if the surrogate gets expenses then the expenses of like 
mm. a surrogate in living in England would be more, more expensive, expensive than the, the expenses, like living expenses of a surrogate living in India. Yeah. They, Regardless um, of... One of the documentaries showed uh, it was it can range between three and five thousand US dollars as, as a lump sum. Oh. Um, that That is just for the surrogate mother. So that's right. not including any costs towards the agency or the doctors or whatever. So I don't know how much actually what the full cost for the couple would be, but it's not, it's, yeah, it's mm. not cheap. Um, but it is cheaper in the East. And so in the play, so. how do they find the surrogate? So you play the an surrogate. Agency, yeah, an agency, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so I play the surrogate, and also along the way there are other uh, women who interact with this couple. Um, and particularly one of them, which you see most throughout the play, is um, a woman that... Uh, uh, Robin, the the main uh, the lead, um, strikes up a, a friendship with over the telephone. Mm. Uh, so she, one of the characters works in a call center in India, um, and they become yeah that's their journey. And I also play Nira, who is the surrogate, um, and yeah, it's it. Sh- she definitely sees it as a business. Like mm. it's it is. Um, you so can't. You, yeah. So is like that her job? Your like. She's always a surrogate, and that's no, 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 no. But you can. Um, there are women who do that. I watched two really opposing ones this morning, which really confused me. One showed a very legit agency that treated all the women well. So you, so they, um, the embryos put in them, and then they uh, contracts are signed and everything. Like one woman has has been chosen. And then she literally lives in the dormitory, and they're like she's cooked for, cleaned for. Like so, mm. if you imagine, like a lot of these women would be the ones doing the cooking, the cleaning, like really sort of manual stuff. And now they just they just have to relax and be good hosts for the baby, so to make sure they're healthy so and deliver nice. the baby. Yeah, it's sort of yeah yeah to some extent it's 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 right. a luxury. However, if a lot of them will have children of their own. So what's sad is what you see in the first documentary I watched is she can't go home. So she's like in tears wow. because she can't, you know, her little baby, her other baby, oh, her, no. her own baby is, you know, that mom was crying like when he's being taken away because they have visits and stuff. Yeah. So there is definitely a hardship. And also they're, they're uh, I don't know this, but when you get pregnant, your body releases this more of the happy hormone to like help mm. the baby. And, um, so you're connecting with this baby even though it's not yours. Mm. So there's a lot going on for the mother. The second documentary I watched, which was completely opposing, so this was all legit. Um, <clears throat> one woman is chosen and she she and the couple go through it together and that's kind of our story. Um, and this other one, a lot of women are impregnated with an embryo and then just the healthiest one sort of makes it through. Mm. And this is, and they don't really answer this question, and I don't know how much of this is true, but I don't know what happens to the other babies. I don't know what. And then this, in the second one, they talk. This lawyer, this female lawyer, um, is piping up about it, saying, you know, what? This is really dangerous to start saying that we want to. But what if the baby is disabled? You can't control Downs or anything. You know, any other kind of complication. Um, the couple can walk away. There's no legal. There's actually no law to protect the surrogate mother. Whoa. And then no, and then also what they were saying is that no nation will take this baby, because the egg and the sperm are let's say American. Yeah. The the, the woman is Indian, but no, where does the baby belong? Mm. That's, and that isn't that so crazy. Are there this baby would have been no, born in those. Circumstances? I don't know. I don't know. This is the thing that they don't answer in the documentary, and I don't have the answer. But I don't know. That's scary. That is really scary for these women who out of desperation maybe mm. for the money because you, you you wouldn't you know it's I don't know how many years salary um, that are possibly not treated mm. the best yeah, mm. yeah. but and then the first one showed that they are so I, I guess wow what you know industry. what I mean I don't know so it's a yeah. complete industry yeah yeah that's probably yeah. the full range isn't it I yeah. imagine that both are real to a certain extent so yeah. what's in the play what's your character's experience of it do you know yet you I can't talk I don't think I can talk okay about it okay, okay. We'll do, yeah. no spoilers yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. <clears throat> yeah. okay but, okay we'll leave but that a lot, on there. but a lot of the play isn't actually about 
the surrogates and it's a lot to do with Robin and AJ who are the couple Mm -hmm. um, and particularly Robin and really interestingly look for for reading the play and for me what's interesting is is as a woman being completely sort of swept up into this idea of that's what you just do next you have a baby Mm. and um, even like the character sort of has a couple of bits where this is explored but just generally I think it's sort of you may think that you do want a baby but how much of it is like an unconscious decision I think that's really interesting I think the play looks at that Mm. yeah Um, well there is that thing where you suddenly you get to a certain age and your Facebook feed becomes babies yeah and like yeah like I feel like this is happening now it's like suddenly all of my friends are like either they're having babies or they're like becoming aunties and uncles yeah. and it's like just you, when you're surrounded by it it suddenly becomes more of a like oh do I don't I thing rather than that's something for the future you know yeah. what I reckon yeah. Facebook really exacerbates that because like not that people didn't feel the same way before but social media I think just seeing pi- like pictures of babies yeah. all the time and now that babies are so online as soon as they're born oh yeah. my gosh yeah. I, I, don't, I can't imagine that yeah like but that, that picture's like out there then it's yeah crazy. But I think it's the same. I mean, even without social media, all your friends who you would, like, rather than going to the pub, they're all like, oh, we're meeting for a coffee morning with our buggies yeah. and we're having a yeah. sober birthday because so-and-so's yeah, pregnant. Yeah. Like, mm. it, even regardless of faith, Facebook, it's, like, just pressure. It gets to a point where it's around. And actually, um, there should be some sort of education early on about things that you can't say. And I don't... I think it's really important not really unfair in the grand scheme of things, not the worst thing in the world, but I think it can be really painful, that question, Um, because you just don't know what someone's going through. And I know people who've had problems, and, you know, that's all they get, is like, so when when are you going to, oh, wait till you have your children, or Mm. like, oh my God, let me tell you about, like, what it's going to be like. And you just, it's so, like, I think there's more awareness of it now, but um, that should definitely be something that maybe is taught early on. Yeah, Yeah. definitely. That just... Let the person tell you if they want to. Yeah. Mm. yeah, it's really it's weird how we won't ask about people's salaries, but we will ask about. Oh their my god! Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. Like you can't ask how much you earn, but yeah. yeah but what you can do with your body. Let yeah. Me know about that. Yeah. I yeah. have to know. I'm entitled to know about your choices there. Oh. Yeah. Uh, interesting. Gendered. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so mm. you can't really tell us much about the character who's the surrogate. But you're Not playing no. other characters. Yeah. So how is it playing several different characters in one um, the, show? These ones, Jennifer's written them really differently. So that always helps, I think. Um, so it is a bit of like, at the, in the beginning, it was like, I don't know if you have, well, your tax return, let's take um, <laughs> as an example. Oh. At the beginning, I was like, I can't even look at it. I'm just going to, it is a bit of a mountain. But once we started talking about it and working with Vic, the director and stuff, like it, it starts to then become clearer and more manageable. But at the beginning, yeah, it's like, oh my God. <laughs> oh my How God. many characters? <laughs> so, uh, five. Five wow. characters. Yeah. Um, which is, it's cool. like in Vaults, it was eight. <gasps> and I didn't have, I couldn't change my accent and I couldn't change my costume. And I couldn't change anything. <gasps> so I, I found that much more difficult. That was really hard. What a challenge. So and they were just like, um, because of the nature of that show, it was just, it was so quick as well. Um, so that was the play that you were in at Vault Festival last yeah, year? Yeah, Astronauts of Hartlepool, Sounds which was a wicked show. Amazing. Yeah, it was a, it was really cool. It was just me and a great actress called Sophie Steer, um, written by Tim Foley um, and directed by Sharon, who's, who's brilliant. And um, I feel like I'm just like, had to name Aww. these people because they're so <laughs> cool. Um, yeah, but that was by far, it, because I I think it's nice that if you feel like you can change um, an accent or something as well, I don't know, that, that I feel like that's helpful. Do you get to change accents in this? I do, yeah. Oh, yeah. So that I feel like what do you helpful. do? 
Oh, yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. 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 It's very true. Then I don't have to like say anything. So <laughs> whatever yeah. you think it was, that yeah. was the answer. Oh, yeah, yeah, whatever yeah. comes out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's from several different places. Yeah, <laughs> yeah she's, she's travelled a lot. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, um, so playing five different characters, mm-hmm. and but you played nine at Vault, so it's no big deal. Three left, <laughs> four left. Yeah. yeah. Um, so you're obviously like um, super accomplished on the stage. Uh, yeah. No, no, I wouldn't say that. Yeah, no. you are. Um, um, looks you've great. also been on TV a bit yeah. as well. Yeah. How's um, how's balancing the two? Um, well, I haven't been on TV recently. Well, as in like balancing, as in as in like doing a career that involves both screen and stage. Um, like that's a good question. I don't. I, it's. I think a lot of actors would say this. It feels like it's just work. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Like you just take what you can get and um, at times I've been lucky enough to be able to say, you know what, I don't want to take that project because of w- some reason. But most of the time you just, you know, you take the work, don't you? Um, of course, it's I find it's really different the way you work on them both. Um, and especially with EastEnders being a long running um, soap, it was different to any other thing that I've done even other television stuff um as a woman of color um EastEnders was the first time that I was able to actually play out some incredible really really um which is the kind of stories that we all want to do like I got to have a baby who I'd given up and um fall in love and then get married and and then have get pregnant again and have and then there was a stillbirth storyline and it was there was so much um great stuff for an actor to get their teeth into which you just don't get um well I didn't wasn't you weren't getting that you were getting the bit roles and the supporting mm-hmm. things and um is this on like shorter tv series or yeah like just tv tv in general i think it's changed a lot now for sure but i um, think that's also really important considering especially like for a show like eastenders like the masoods were such an important family for really a mainstream telev- yeah. soap opera television show yeah um yeah i think that's yeah what a role they oh, we should probably say who you were <laughs> oh yeah um, sorry <laughs> shabnam masood yeah. yeah but yeah they the theater and television they are they require i think just different uh paces of energy a lot of the time do you and, get and concentration like different scripts offered to you sent to you do you get different uh, oh no i audition for sure <laughs> yeah do you get like but like the the auditions that you get sent up for yeah do you find that you're getting similar do you have a similar casting in film and tv or um, on stage or um are the characters like you were saying about how you didn't get to play a character until extenders yeah. that had such an epic journey yeah um do you find that the epic journeys are more on the tv and on stage or more of the like i know i definitely watch epic small lots journeys. of amazing journeys on tv like characters um but they i think they still a like, lot of them tend to be either men or or, or uh, white. Yeah. Uh, um. And like I've watched a lot of great shows, and I still will like McMafia or um, Line of D- Line of Duty is a different one. That's that was brilliant for diversity. But um, uh, the replacement, which had two m- two of my favourite actresses, Vicky McClure and Morgan Christie, I th- I, mm. I think it was brilliant. But again, they're not the ro- like Viola Davis did it said it the best in her. Is it Emmy speech? She's like, you know, we can't, we can't get awards for roles that we don't get to play. Yeah. So I couldn't. So she got this amazing role for How to Get Away with Murder, but um, it, you know, how many because of them can you say you, you yeah. see? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so they, I know, I definitely watch them, and I, I, I've read a lot more. I think things have changed a lot because they are getting much better. The roles. Um, do you think it's that the industry is getting better, both the industries are getting better, or do you think it's like your career's gone woo because of this epic uh, journey that you got to do on EastEnders? No, I think a lot more, I think people like Michaela Cole are, are, are helping the situation um, just by, I don't, I don't think she meant to set out to do this, but just by creating a show, the kind of show she did with Chewing Gum. Um, so none, I think 
just there are more shows that people are creating themselves that are showing that um, we're capable. And I think I've, I've definitely heard it before where you see like a, a, a lineup for a cast and it, there's no, there's like no one of colour in it. And they do go, we couldn't find anyone good enough. Mm. And I've heard that before and you're like, I, I, I don't buy that. You know, Hello. we all know that's not true. We all know yeah. that's not true. Um, so I think um, there's a lot of people proving proving it. Wasn't it Amazing. awful with, this is Hollywood, but like, um, weren't they, when they were making the casting Aladdin recently, they said they couldn't find an Indian man who could sing and dance and act oh as something for the lead and it's like no I didn't hear that you, oh it was hilarious I mean it's <laughs> awful but it's yeah. hilarious like, imagine if there were like, films with loads of Indian actors singing and dancing yeah that is God. like three oh. times oh. Oh. like trillions billions more yeah. than Hollywood if is only anyway. there was yeah. an industry that we could look to like Hollywood <laughs> <laughs> mm, what's it called again yeah. <laughs> oh for God's sake yeah. oh. oh it's things like that it's, you're right it is funny cause it's, but it feels like things have changed a lot recently I don't know if you that's great yeah yeah I always find it hard to distinguish between what I'm becoming more aware of myself I agree yeah and what's yeah. actually changing yeah sure. yeah because yeah so like for example the last two years going up to Edinburgh Fringe as Bechdel Theatre looking specifically for representation and like seeking out we you, find it we find it we find loads of especially this year with just amazing shows and um however then you walk down the street and you look up the billboards, the posters, the yes. walls full of hundreds of posters, and you go, oh, actually, actually, the white men are still there with the biggest posters, with the most posters, most yeah. funding. with the most funding, with the biggest venues, and you go, oh, God, I have to look outside my bubble, which is, like... It's so... I'm st- I think that's so true. Yeah, I mean... It's- for every little bit of change, I feel like I'm so ready to champion it and be like, yes, this is groundbreaking. We're, yeah. having, a, we're having a moment. And then it's like, oh, wait. The, yeah. Because yeah. <laughs> even just last year when um, Paula was on with Denise Goff and they build, what's his face? Sorry, I don't know his, I don't really follow his work. Not that I love her, but um, the other actor, the actor that, that I was with her. Is it? <laughs> <laughs> I forget his name, but like the press and this is when she, like, she was on Twitter and they build him first, starring da 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 da, mm. and Denise Goff, and she was really vocal about it, and she replied straight away or retweeted it and whatever, and said that no, the the title name is Paula. I'm playing Paula. I'm leading this cast. <gasps> yeah. Yes. And, like, and this, and I think there's more and more of that kind of thing that um, kind that like kind of statements or or people being much more vocal about it. Um, more than Christy being more, like, I think when the A word came out, and everyone, a lot of people got on her back about not being likable. And I, I remember she talk, her talking about like it's not likable, it's yeah. it's boring, and um, and no one would ever say that to a gu- like to mm. a guy, mm. um, which we know. I know that's conversations we're happening a lot. Yeah. But I feel like in the UK, <gasps> <No>. <laughs> it, I think feel like it happened more in the US. I feel like the US are yeah. ahead of. Do you know what I I want to put in? I know you were saying about um, like Facebook making people (laughs) like aware of having kids and and competition about lives and stuff. But I think one good thing about social media is that people can support each other a lot easier. Yeah, Yeah. so true. So if you are someone that kind of wants the confidence to say I'm leading this cast, but to hear that you know to have a thousand other people retweeting it and saying you know and backing you up and saying like no do give this person recognition for the work that they've done and you know yes we love this series and it could be a series that has like a small release but then if it gets a huge online following because people are like oh my god this person's amazing they've created this show then it can you know it's a lot more kind of democratic in a way and a lot more opportunities for artists to support each other and for audiences to support to be active in supporting artists they like yeah they can do more than just tune in on a thursday night they can actually like interact with a person yeah. and share their stuff and, and that kind build of a network and what she did that kind of opinion might just shift someone else's yeah and that just re- like just like you were saying um about how much is happening how much you're aware of just for someone to be aware that that oh yeah that is not cool to, yeah. to build a guy first for what reason actually yeah that like, was, why would you do that no yeah, yeah. I think you know the, the modern age has some pluses yeah. Yeah. yeah I feel like the online space is like a really good yeah an amazing place for minorities 
and women and people of colour, but also you just open to so much more harassment. I, think, I was just thinking about Twitter as well in terms mm, of like it's yeah. like black Twitter is its whole amazing thing, but then like as a person of colour, being vocal online, you're just subject to so much more harassment and abuse yeah. and threats and things like that. So, yeah. Good a bit bleak, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, down there. Sorry, but, you it know, is. it's true, it's true. <laughs> There's pluses and minuses to everything. Mm-hmm. Um, Have we asked you about the company Special Relationship? Yeah. Um, who are yeah. the company that you are working with for this production? Yeah, yeah. and um, you mentioned the, also the writer and director, and you should probably say who they yeah, are. Yeah. Um, I heard their names. But. Jen, who's actually over, she's American. Um, she's the writer. She's the writer. Jennifer she's, Maisel. Yeah. She, sorry. Yeah. Um, for uh, the listeners who are doing yeah, Google. Yeah. Sorry. I'm just like Jen. Just <laughs> look that up. Um, she's she's brilliant. She's come over. Actually, she just landed yesterday. We've got wow. um, uh, Vic, uh, who's the director. Don't ask me to pronounce his surname. Even he just said <laughs> <laughs> like it's really. <laughs> Sivalingam, oh. I want to say. Yeah, that looks yeah, right. I, does that sound right? Sivalingam looks like how it's I'm written. Sorry, Vic. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so, yeah, um, he's directing. Where's he from? He's awesome. Where's Is he, he from? British? Um, he's originally ma- uh, Malaysian and then has has lived over, I think he lived in uh, some Holland for a bit. Right. And, but yeah, he's he's now in the UK for a Because I know the um, special relationship company is all about connecting, is it British, American and... And it's Kevin's, yeah, Kevin's American. Yeah, mm-hmm. so Kevin's American. Lucy Fenton is British. Yeah. And Anita Creed is British. Okay. Um, but, yeah, they're awesome. They are just really down to earth, which I really like. And don't, there's no, like, trying to be cool. Everything's just about just getting this this play um, done to the best we can and I really like that it's, yeah it's been brilliant mm. they're great if anyone gets a chance to work with them I'd say really do mm. and that's, that's four, four days into rehearsal I feel like yeah, yeah. that's but made the lead a really up, good impression yeah, yeah the lead up the audition the the way they've co- been in contact everything is just super um, respectful and open mm. I'm so looking forward to seeing this show yeah Yay. me too ooh, ooh. <laughs> cat it's a bit jumpy today <laughs> oh he's got strangers in his house yeah. so sorry I'm just gonna face the back now send this face yeah because I knew about this question and then I thought of too many um oh, isn't that amazing list. though like There's we so now many. So I, I'm like easily so inspired <laughs> <laughs> no there well I mentioned one of them Denise Garth mm. for that reason for a few reasons but also when she what she did at the Olivier, Olivier's taking that 30 seconds of whatever she had to she could have thanked so many of whoever she loved and she took it to say there's this category is shocking for for um the lack of diversity and like the, she, mm. she's she's amazing um but also um there is a organization called global citizen Mm. And the Global Poverty Project. I don't know if you've heard of them. I've heard of Global Citizen. Yeah, yeah. and Amy Agnew, who is the director for Europe, and they are they fight for um, a lot of things po- um, to end poverty by I think twenty twenty, but I'm not, probably not that. But um, one of the things is girls' education. She's huge on girls' education, and um, and uh, I think Michelle Obama and a lot of people around the world are trying to do this but um they she's that organization are are hot on it are really hot on it um and i think it's this year that they that's one of their biggest pushes mm. um that's just a because great they, feminist fave yeah. Yeah. yeah something like that yeah really like an organization do yeah. check them out because you can help so the way they work global citizen is that they um they don't ask for money. You don't have to pay anything to support them. But when they are trying to push an action, um, so for instance, if it is for to get a certain percentage of girls in a village to get into education, um, and if it's something to do with... It, a lot of it is to do with um, infrastructure. They're trying to change the system mm. um, to, like, to cause long-term change. And so they'll ask their global citizens to get behind them and tweet or write to or email um, the I don't know the council of whatever 
and um, by showing them that there's such a big voice for this or there's such a there's a big um, push from people who want this one thing um, especially when it's around election time or something they want to please the people and um, that's how they sort of get a lot of things accomplished so it's it's great in that way because it's about uniting people to like to help people who can't who don't have a voice through technology through well. technology yeah 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 well. they're amazing really check them out um, and Amy and Amy Agnew and Caroline Dolman as well who work there they're great they're amazing mm. yeah wow that's a great one yeah, yeah. thank you <laughs> did you want to say yours well the one that I was thinking of which is what I'm currently reading at the moment well, I'm reading two things at the moment but the one I'm going to choose is the one that I've just started which is um, why I'm no longer talking to white people about race um by Rennie Edo, Edo Lodge. Um, I've, I'm trying to like read it slowly because it's one of those books that I could just like eat up in a day. Um, but already I've learnt so much. Like, mm. but, but like amazingly, because I'm right at the beginning, like the introduction is really kind of like going back into British colonial like history. But it's so much of stuff that I don't even know about, like the history of our own slave ships and ports and like, how much Liverpool was a part of this. Because, our, you know, coincidentally, our British education made it all about America. Mm, um, wow, so there's wow, so much okay. we didn't learn about our own history. Yeah. Um, and like even that. just, like, reading the beginning of that and, and kind of remembering, um, you know, the paths that are built on historical and institutional racism in this country um, is kind of, yeah, I'm really trying to digest it in the right way. So, so far, her book is amazing, but I knew it would be. Um, so I really highly recommend that. Everyone says it's amazing. Yeah, it was on my Christmas list, but I didn't get it, so I'm gonna oh. have to. I'm gonna have to go buy it. Yeah. Um, uh, what I did get for Christmas was Mary Beard's book, Women in Power, or Women and Power, um, and that was really cool. For it's a very small book. I read it in like an hour and a half or something on Boxing Day with a full tummy, and it um, it's all about kind of the history of the representation of women but mainly because she's obviously a classicist in classical like so greek and roman culture so but, but then it talks about a lot about how the representations of women in those cultures that are so upheld by europe as being like the best so like if you've got the odyssey and the iliad and all that stuff mm. um even though it's so many thousands of years old still has an impact on the way like women are not given platforms or not allowed to speak or not allowed to say certain things or have to fulfill certain kind of stereotypical criteria um and has a bit about you know classical plays classical theater and the fact how women didn't perform on stage mm, so you've got these yeah. characters like antigone and like Medea, and they wouldn't have been performed by women and it's kind of that whole the same kind of conversation that we have about shakespeare of like how can we look at that stuff now and like be like oh yeah it was really important it's obviously had an impact but criticize it and say well this was shocking and this, and this was is shocking. a thin and book yeah it's a tiny little book oh, it sounds like it's gonna yeah. be like really like whew. yeah <laughs> i'm like that's amazing that you can fit it into like yeah a little, it's like... a little pocket-sized handbaggy book amazing yeah so you know um if it's like by the counter at waterstones oh, right? yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you're looking for something to carry on your commute a light one, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, well, thank you so uh, much for uh, yeah, being on the oh, podcast. Thank you for having me. It's yeah, it's been wonderful, amazing, and I can't wait to come see the play. Yeah. So where, uh, so when are you on? So twenty third of Jan till February seventeenth, and it's at the Park Theatre, um, and they've got some twelve pound t- tickets going. Okay, if perfect. you go. I think on the website or something there's some for the previews and then I think there's going to be there possibly is going to be some for the first week as well cheaper tickets so uh, there's sure. also a young patrons scheme they get 10 pound tickets and under 30s top up nice Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> damn you <laughs> um, and it's an hour 40 minutes yep. approx oh that's approx. like your favourite yay <laughs> yeah. under is there two an hours interval? No interval. Oh, that's honestly that's best. Oh, absolutely. Thank you. <laughs> and everybody, anyone would think I really hate theatre because I'm yeah. always like, yes, just it's get short. in and out. But it just means you have more time to talk about it afterwards. Yeah, true. Which is kind of like not the best bit, but like 
the, what we're about. The, the, the like extra bit. It's like yeah. the bonus that you get at the end of going to the theatre is having a good chat about it. So you yeah. wouldn't have liked um, Angels in America. No, I didn't go and see it because I was like, oh, oh, I, I didn't see so it. Did you? Yeah. Oh, it was like seven a hours though. Did you get day. a number? Did you do a whole thing? <laughs> I did it all in one day. Yeah, we did the ballot. The twenty pound ballot. Oh wow! Oh, yeah. Wow! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my it was god! Really good. Wow! I don't That's think I would have been able to handle the like, will I, won't I go and see it? Like, I'd have to psych myself up for at least a week to watch oh, a seven hour show. Yeah, I can't deal with the like more than one night. I haven't seen. I mean, completely different. But I haven't seen the Harry Potter one yet because it's the whole two parter. It's too long. Two nights thing, unless you do the whole day. I, th- I, I feel like, like you need to do it in the whole day. Yeah. But then Maybe I don't know, do. that's just because what I do. Anyway, yeah. they're all here, sounds like it's going to be one evening, and you can still one hang evening. around in the bar yep. afterwards and Maybe have a lovely chat. chat. about it. Yeah. Can't wait to be there. Or here. So, nice. <laughs> nice. Pun, pun inch. Sorry, it's, it's so bad. Oh, thank um, you so much for talking to us, Rocky. Uh, yeah, thank you. Bye. Oh, wait, can our um, listeners oh. follow you in any sense? Oh, yeah. Oh, uh, on Twitter, I, I'm not very, not on it much, but you can, it's at, Raki Thakwa, I think. We'll link um, it. Yeah. So that, uh, that's yeah. Any any on the Insta, on the Snapchat? Not on Insta. I'm not on the any Snapchat. of the rest. <laughs> I, I've got Snapchat. Yeah, Beth just got Snapchat. <laughs> I, I've heard it's really addictive and I'm like going nowhere near it. It's like, so oh, funny. I spent a week me. just sending people really hideous photos of my, up my nose on the train <laughs> yeah. and, then, and then sort of went off it because I don't really, I don't really understand. I, I don't really get it. I don't use, yeah. No, it's, you want to say it? Right. Yeah. Let's, yeah. let's finish okay. it there. All right. Finish yeah. it there. <laughs> Thank you, Aki. Thank Bye. you, everyone, for listening. Bye. Bye-bye. There or Here was supported using public funding by the National Lottery through Arts Council England. Thank you, Raki, again for such a wonderful interview. I loved that so much. That was such a lovely chat. I can't wait for the show. I know. Um, so, as promised, here is our February feminist theatre shows to see. I know we're in January, but as in what's coming up. Um, Beth, do you want to kick us off? Yeah. So, the first one, obviously, is there or here. We just heard all about the show. We are also doing a post show. So, if you come and see the show on the evening of Thursday, February 1st, then you can hang out with us and have a chat about it. It's a bit like a kind of feminist book club, but with a play instead of a book. Nice. So, come along. Lovely. Um, don't you also have something else coming up in terms yeah, of BAFTA? Yeah, I'm doing an actor's workshop at the Monobox, which I mentioned in the last episode, I think, but it's always worth dropping in again. We've we're doing that with a special guest director, Madeline Moore of The Thelmas. So that's going to be at the Old Wick, Vic Workrooms and you can book it by going to themonobox.co.uk slash events. Lovely. Um, also coming up, there is 96 Festival at Clapham Omnibus, which is Feb the 2nd till the 28th. Um, hang on, let me just think about it. Um... So 96 was a year of breakups. It was the year that Princess Di divorced Prince Charles. And it was also the year that Clapham Common hosted the Pride After March party. So the Omnibus Theatre are celebrating that big event that happened. And 96 is a festival of theatre and music that champions um, LGBTQ representation, progress, celebration. And if you buy a ticket for two or more shows, which is n- like barely anything, just two shows out of, across the whole festival, you can redeem a free drink at the bar, subject to availability. Um, so you'll definitely find us there. Yeah. 96 Festival, Clapham Omnibus. Uh, next up is How the Vote Was Won, which is at the bunker on February 5th. It's a special celebration of uh, February 1918's representation of the People Act, which granted the vote to some women in Britain. Mm-hmm. Uh, so there's going to be an evening of a reading of a suffrage play, How the Vote Was Won, and a post-show, what is it, Actors and Activists Special Night of Drama and Discussion. Sounds great. And yeah. sorry, I didn't want to talk over you. Um, <laughs> sounds great. Also, coming up, we have Jubilee at the Lyric Hammersmith. I think we've mentioned this one before. It's on from the 15th of Feb till March the 10th, which is a new stage adaptation of Derek Jarman's seminal film of the same name, Jubilee, starring the wonderful Temi Wilkie from Pex and Travis Alabanza. 
Then we have a previous podcast guest, Bella Heesom, with Rejoicing at Her Wondrous Vulva, The Young Woman Applauded Herself. I just love that as a title. It's the show title of the year. And that is at Oval House, February 21st to 23rd. And then we really hope that it will um, probably continue and there'll be more chances to see it. And we'll put all the dates on here and on our blog. Oval House, I've been seeing lots of really great stuff at Oval House recently. Yeah, I Um, like them. Also, another fe- uh, another f- uh, yeah. also another feminist festival coming up is Breaking Loose Festival, which is on at Bread and Roses Theatre from Feb eighteenth to twenty fifth, which is self described as a festival exploring intersectionality and solidarity. They haven't told us what's in it yet, but we know to keep our eyes peeled. So if you know any more about that, do let us know. And obviously we have Vault Festival starting this month, so we're going to give you a quick rundown of all the shows that we are on our, what do you call it? On to our, see list. Yes, we're going to give you a rundown of all the shows that are on our to see list. Make sure you've got a pen and paper or head over to the Vault Festival website to look them up and their dates. First off, there is Fuck You, Pay Me, which I saw at Brainchild. It's about working in the sex industry. It's great. Go see it. Next is The Breaks in You and I. And I'm doing a post show for this one, uh, Saturday, February 3rd. So if you come along to that one, stick around afterwards for the post show. Uh, there's also 50-50, which is only on for a few nights, 1st to the 4th of Feb. So make sure you go see that one. That one's a series of short plays. And then Mary's Babies. Madonna or Whore. Double in Feminity. White. We saw this one at Oval House. Yes, amazing. Coco Brown, go see it. White. Uh, it's about being mixed race. The cat, um, among, among, sorry, amongst other things. <laughs> <laughs> the cat's mother, which I think is a great name. I just, who's the cat's mother? Who's is that a phrase? Who do you mean the cat's mother? Cat. Who's she? Who's she? The cat's mother. That's the phrase. Isn't it the cat's pajamas? No, the cat's pajamas is like if you're really great, like the bee's knees. But the cat's mother is like when people say she, and it's like, oh, it's rude to say she. You have to use their name. Oh, you know, okay. it's like that that kind of phrase. Anyway, okay. didn't know that one. That's all I know about it. <laughs> The internet was made for adults. Oh, I saw a work in progress of this and it was really good. It's like a cabaret. It's a show about somebody who's putting on a cabaret show, Great. but it's also about sex. Ooh, lovely. Uh, bicycles and Fish. Uh, Joy, which I've heard really good things about. Finding Fassbender. Why do I recognise this one? That's mm-hmm. Lydia Larson's oh, one woman yeah. show. So if anyone saw To Skin a Cat, it's about moving to London from Wolverhampton. And something to do with Michael Fassbender. Ooh. It's going to be great. Surprise, which is only on for two nights, 14th, 15th. That one's about anxiety. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Vagina Dialogues. N- need we say more? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I have a mouth and I will scream. That's Abby Zakarian. She's a great playwright, so I have high hopes for that. Uh, Elsa Ooh, is yeah. the next one. One Woman Show again. Uh, which I saw at Soho Theatre. She's a wonderful singer and some very dry Mm humour. Egg Static is also on for One Night Only, which is Feb the 16th. Uh, Francis Farmer, Zombie Movie Star. Good name. Cooking with Juniper. The Quantum Physics of My Heart. Conquest. And Borderline, which uh, is made by one of the performers who was in Bullish. Yes. Yeah. Okay, lovely. So I think that's all the shows we have to round up that we've put on our list for now. Um, make sure you check out the Bechdel Theatre website and blog to find out more or head over to the Vault Festival. And as always, tweet us with shows that you know pass the Bechdel test as yes. well. Yes, let us know. Okay, thanks guys. We'll see you next episode. Bye. Bye.